Let, let's walk through Exhibit 949, uh, Brad, if you could advance. And doctor, tell us what we're seeing. Okay, yep. Now you can see the car is being rotated. You're able to see uh, Officer Chauvin. You're able to see Officer King and then Officer Lane down at his feet. You see underneath Mr. Floyd and now the car has been rotated. Now the car has been removed. And so you're able to see how they're positioned at different points. Uh, in terms of with Officer Shaven with his left knee on the neck, his right knee on uh, Mr. Floyd's arm and chest, and then you can see here Officer Lane holding his legs, and then you can see Officer King with his knee uh, on his torso. So this represents a snapshot in time, as you told us. Uh, did the officers' positions uh, change over time as they were there on the ground? Yes, they, the, the officers' positions changed over time, and also the position of Mr. Floyd himself changed over time, and these become relevant in how we evaluate everything. And, and was it something you factored into your analysis then? Yes. Did you consider where Mr. Chauvin's left knee was during the encounter? Yes, um, for Officer Chauvin's left knee is virtually on the neck for the vast majority of the time. And, uh, and when you say vast majority, are you able to... Be more it's specific? more than 90% of the time in my calculations. There's certain times where it becomes difficult because you don't get a good view of where it is. So, for example, I know that an Officer Chauvin's right knee is on his back 57% of the time. The reason I'm not able to say for the 43% is that I don't get a good view. I can, other times, don't have a good view of exactly where it is. So did you focus on the first five minutes and few seconds? Yes, I focused on the f first five minutes, three seconds, because that is up to the time uh, that we see evidence of brain injury. So if uh, Mr. Chauvin's right knee was on his back from time to time, uh, at other times it was placed where, in your observation? In, in, it was placed on his arm or, and then rammed in to Mr. Floyd's left chest, so really whether you're making a distinction of whether the knee is on the chest per se or whether it's on the left arm and rammed in against the left chest. From the point of view of breathing, the effects are extremely similar. So let's, uh, let's turn to uh, the, the number one on the... the oh yes, uh, there, on the dot cam. Um, so I wanted to, to turn back to the notes that the number one here that uh, written down for uh, the reasons you told us for Floyd's low oxygen, Mr. Floyd's low oxygen, handcuffs and the street to talk about the first yeah. one. Um, could you first, uh, Dr. Tobin, uh, tell us uh, how these various mechanisms, the, the four that, that you've discussed, handcuffs in the street, knee on the neck, prone position, knee on the neck, back, um, knee on the back, arm and side. How do those mechanisms fall into your work of either respiratory physiology or clinical medicine? They don't have an awful lot to do with clinical medicine, but they are directly related to my work in physiology. So in understanding the forces that the body has to cope with. These become, these are crucial in terms of the various forces that are involved in physiology. So then turning to the, the first one in handcuffs uh, and the street, uh, the very first one, uh, what is the effect of the handcuffs in the context of what happened to Mr. Floyd? The handcuffs are extremely important in Mr. Floyd, but the handcuffs on their own just handcuffs per se are not that important. It must be the handcuffs combined with the street. And it's because of the positioning of the handcuffs at the back 
then how he's manipulated with the handcuffs by both Officer Chauvin and by Officer King, how they manipulate the handcuffs. And they're pushing the handcuffs into his back and pushing them high. Then on the other side, you have the street. So the street is playing a crucial part because he's against a hard asphalt street. So the way they're pushing down on his handcuffs combined with the street, his left side, and it's particularly the left side we see that, it's like the left side is in a vice. It's totally being pushed in, squeezed in from each side, from the street at the bottom, and then from the, uh, the way that the handcuffs are manipulated. It's not just the handcuffs. It's how the handcuffs are being held, how they're being pushed, where they're being pushed, that uh, totally interfere with central features of how we breathe. So uh, Mr. Floyd then is, is pancake between the pavement underneath him and then force on top of him. Precisely. Now, could you help us to explain how this mechanism, uh, the, the handcuffs and the street, how does that explain the shallow breathing that you've described? Yeah. So this gets back to how we breathe. And this is fairly simple. So the way we breathe, we have two big muscles that help us with breathing. We have the diaphragm and we have the ribcage muscles. The diaphragm does about 70% of what we need for breathing. And about 30% of it comes from the ribcage. And there's when the diaphragm contracts, or the ribcage contract, they expand the chest. And when you expand the chest, then air flows in from outside, and it's coming in. And that's all that happens on inspiration. But to expand the chest, there's two crucial actions that have to happen. And we've referred to the, these by the terms pump handle and bucket handle. So if bucket handle is simple, so if you have a regular bucket that you carry water with, and you lift up the handle of the bucket, the handle comes up like this. And so when you contract your diaphragm, you are performing a bucket handle movement of your, on the rib cage. So you contract your diaphragm like that, and each time as you inspire, you can see it yourself. As you inspire each of you there in the jury, you inspire, you see that your rib cage is going outwards like that. That's a bucket handle movement. The second movement that you have is called the pump handle. And this reflects to an old water pump that would be in the yard for uh, pumping out water. And so you have the handle at the top of the pump. And you lift up the handle of the pump each time. And the water comes out the spout at the bottom. So you're filling up, uh, getting your container of water. So with that action, you're lifting up here. This refers to the front to back movement of the chest wall. So with the pump handle, your chest goes out with each breath. And so you can do it yourself. As you take a deep breath, you can feel that front to back, you're expanding your chest. The front to back expansion of your chest is with your pump handle. The si at the same time, you're doing both of them at the same time. At the same time you're doing that, your chest is expanding from side to side. And that's with your bucket handle. So both of these are occurring. And these are vital. Without these, you can't breathe. If you don't have the bucket handle working and the pump handle working, there's nothing happening. There's no air going to get in there. Doctor, in this case, were you able to observe whether Mr. Floyd's breathing was impacted by the handcuffs and the placement on the street? Yes, I was. Uh, what did you observe, Dr. Tobin? What, what I observed is particularly is in terms of the hands of the police and the handcuffs particularly on the left side. So they were forcing his left wrist up into his chest, forcing it in tight against his chest, forcing it high up. And you have to keep in mind that the opposite side of this is the street. So he was being squashed between the two sides. And so this meant that he couldn't exert his pump handle because, I mean, the street totally blocked his pump handle, there was no way he could do any 
front to back movement. And again, the way they were pressing in on the back, there was absolutely no way that he could do any front to back movement. Then in addition, because of the knee that was rammed in against the, the left side of his chest, sometimes the knee was down on the arm or in against the chest. So this would have the same effect. So basically, on the left side of his lung, it was almost like a surgical pneumonectomy. It was almost to the effect as if a surgeon had gone in and removed the lung. Not quite, but along those lines. So there was virtually very little opportunity for him to be able to get any air to move into the left side of his chest. So he was going to be totally dependent on what he'd be able to do with the right side. Have you selected any uh, footage uh, from the body-worn cameras that you feel depicts Mr. Floyd's struggles to breathe? Yes. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, what's been marked as State's Exhibit 944. And first, would you describe what it is? What, what you're seeing here is the, on the... Doctor told me the jurors aren't seeing it yet. It's just describing oh, I'm sorry. It the record. This is just for foundation on what it is. They, they will not see this. I'm describing what I'm seeing. For now, yes. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, you, what I'm seeing is that his left hand is being grabbed by the police officers. So that's a handcuffed left hand, and it's been pushed into his chest. So he's just not able to expand that. In addition, you'll, what I'm seeing... All we've done was the foundation for it. Oh, I'm, I, apologize. I apologize. I yeah. apologize. I didn't. So let's, let's hold off and uh, turn it okay, back. Okay, I'm to sorry. Judge. My and misunderstanding. Your Honor, we'll, we'll offer State's Exhibit 944. Any objection? 944 is received. All right. Now, Dr. Tobin, the jurors can see it. Okay. So I, you, I apologize. No, no, it was uh, quite all right. Would you tell us uh, what's yeah. the significance? So, the, I mean, now you're able to see here with the yellow arrow, you're able to see that the officer is holding Mr. Floyd's left hand. He's holding it very firmly. There's a very firm grasp on it. And then Mr. Floyd's left hand is being pushed in against his chest. Also, we're able to see just on the side that Officer Chauvin's uh, knee is coming in, and that's compressing in against his side as well. So the ability to expand his left chest uh, left side here is enormously impaired. And also you're seeing that the size of the chain between the two, the right side and the left side, is very short. So he, his whole left arm is also being pulled over. And so it's preventing him also from expanding the right side. I've been focusing on the bucket handle and the pump handle on the left, but you can also see here that these are impaired, his ability to expand his chest. And of course, the key factor you must keep that isn't kind of, in a sense, seen here in one sense, is the street. The street is what is having a huge effect because he's jammed down against the street. And so the street is playing a major role in preventing him from expanding his chest. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.